first uh, just assigning uh, whatever you want to save as a object. So let's say we want to save exactly this thing right here, our inverse Simpson index analysis. You can uh, name this uh, in, let's say, inf simp, and we assign it to an object and press CTRL enter. So now we'll have it right here in our um, in our global environment, right? And now let's write that into um, on a file. So we write down write you can write write table. You can see that. Now what we what we do is we write table and we first say what we want to write. We write this our object right here. So inf simp we call for object comma. Now you can write down. Now you can write down um, a name, the name of this file. So you can name this file. This you have to do in quotation marks. You can name name it inverse Simpson. Oops, Simpson. Let's say we write a .txt just so you know better. If you write down CGRL enter now, it has saved this file now. You could go to your files, and here there should be a file called inverse Simpson uh, .txt. So we'll go through a browser and find that one. Okay. There we go. And there it is, right here. So you can now open this, open with, use calculator. It should be tap, uh, we don't need to recover anything. No. Okay, yeah, so it should be, I think it's space. It uses space as a delimiter. So you just press space and okay. And there we go. So now you have your, um, Simpson uh, inverse Simpson index right here for sample one for sample two for sample sample three and you can do this with anything in R you can write anything into file and that's the cool thing about it because you might want to you might want to do this for a hundred samples at once automated and you want to have an output file that you can just scroll through and look at all your samples you don't have to have this uh you know you don't have to have this user interface open and actually click through everything you can write this all of this once and then just give it a folder and it does everything for you. You can do the same thing, by the way, for plots. So that's what I love the most about R. So let's say we put our heat map here um, into, into a name and we call this overlap, overlap normalized, okay? You do the arrow, CTRL enter. So now this is also saved. And I, wanna, I want this map to be um, also uh, saved as a PDF file actually. That one is a bit different though. Uh, so you don't write write, you write gg save. And that is because, uh, you know, the graph is made with a package that's called, I think, ggplot2 or something. And this is the command to save those graphs. So gg save, open brackets, close brackets, same thing now as earlier, overlap norm. This is what we named it. A name for your file. So you can just name it, let's say, um, overlap norm.pdf. Press CTL enter. Okay, uh, I think uh, I th it, I'm, it might be that in this command, it just has to be the other way around and you name the name first and then this. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so in this case, ggsave is just other way around. You have to name your file first and then you give the object that it's saved on. And now it's saved the PDF. So here in our folder now, we have the overlap norm. We have it as a PDF that is, um, in this case now, it was all mushed together but you can also change the uh, you can change the format in this case it was mushed together because this is how it was displayed but if you actually run it in a script without visualizing it here this whole thing will be in, in a larger format so don't worry about that you can you can uh, um, work around with that as well so the default is to use exactly this here but you could also write down with uh, let's say four height four and then do the same thing again. Uh, something should have been saved now. Let's check if it changed. Uh, not so much. Let's try this 10, 10. No, maybe. There we go. Looks much nicer, right? So that's how you change the size as well. Now it's huge, um, but you know, find whatever you, what, what, whatever works for you. And then you save it like that. Um, you can do this obviously with everything. And now you can do this also with the parse tables right here. You could write down file and you would have this saved as a table. 
And now imagine how awesome this would be to have this as a bioinformatical pipeline. You know, you write a script, you write something like this that is just much longer with much more analysis and you write it once and then you just give it an input file or even an input folder with a hundred files in it and it will just run through every file and do all of this analysis. And in the end, you just get a folder for each sample that includes several graphs, several text files with a lot of statistical analysis. Um, that would be amazing. And that is what's, what a bioinformatic, bioinformatical pipeline is. It's, it basically, basically automates your workflow and it makes sure that all of your samples are treated the same way and it saves you a lot of time. You learn how to do that kind of stuff in a course I offer on nextgenerationsequencinghq.com. Go ahead and check out that website for a lot of more videos for, um, you know, for you can always ask me in the comment section as well if you have any questions and go ahead and watch the the other videos on my channel for more information we'll go through several tools like tcr not just using our packages but also back to just using normal packages that you can use on windows mac or unix as well through the terminal um i'm looking forward to see you guys in my other videos i'm looking forward to your comments uh, and yeah i guess have a good day